Hello and welcome to another episode of You Can Handle the Tooth. This is The Real Floss Boss, Dr. Griffin, Dr. J here. So um, I want to thank everybody. We've had thousands of uh, views on this um, new series that we're doing called You Can't Handle the Tooth. And we pick different topics. A lot of them are submitted via social media somehow to us. And sometimes we just pick topics that we find we get a lot of questions either through the phone or, um, you know, through live patients being here. But this is a, a, a live video that we're doing and uh, no scripting. We just want to keep things raw and real and hopefully provide some good uh, tips out there for those of you who have an interest in dentistry or need some dentistry. You'll now have some information that you can take back to your dentist and, um, and, and get the treatment done that you're looking for. So today's subject is on gum disease. And it's not a great subject uh, because um, you know it, it, can, it can cause all sorts of problems, not only in the mouth, but also systemically with your body. There is this connection between your gum condition and your general health condition. So um, that's what we're gonna talk about today. And what we've done is we have created uh, top four or five questions that people ask us about gum disease because we figure if everyone else is asking it, that's probably what everybody's wanting to know. So I have Katie helping today. What's up? Appreciate you, Katie, very much. Uh, what is the first question that we got for today? Um, what is gum disease? What is it? <laughs> that's good. So sometimes people don't really understand exactly what gum disease is. They think, oh, infection in the mouth. But let me tell you literally what it is. Gum disease uh, broadly or generally is defined as the loss of gums and bone around the teeth. So the teeth sit in your jaw in bone. They're not anchored in bone. They're, they're, they're suspended with a ligament. So, uh, so the teeth all, should all move just a little bit. But around the tooth is bone and then gums that cover the bone that go all the way up. So um, whenever you have a loss of gums or bone around the tooth, that is uh, defined as gum disease or periodontitis uh, or periodontal disease. Those are the three, um, uh, three classifications. Also, um, most studies that you read will find somewhere uh, over 40%, um, a lot, well, let's see, um, yeah, 47, 45%. Of the um, of Americans have some form of gum disease. Uh, those can be as mild as gingivitis, which is uh, no no real bone loss, but uh, some inflammation of the gums. Um, uh, to as severe as uh, you know, extremely mobile teeth because the bone is uh, receded so far down uh, to to active infection. So um, anyway, anywhere in between that is. Uh, can be considered gum disease. So there's technically there's mild, moderate, and advanced periodontitis or gum disease. And some of that, that is determined basically uh, based on the condition of the gums, whether they're bleeding or pussy, or if they, um, ha or how much bone loss or inflammation that there is around the teeth. So that's what it is. Um, what are the causes of the different types of Okay, so causes, they, there's, a, there's a few different reasons why, uh, not to name all of them, but some of them, you know, you can just cause, right? You can get uh, gum disease from things like uh, smoking, uh, chewing tobacco. Uh, you can get a form of gum disease by brushing too aggressively. If you brush really, really hard, you're going to push those gums down. That's not uh, extremely common, but it can happen. You know, if you grab the toothbrush in a death grip and you just start scouring, you know, um, you can damage the gums by doing that. Uh, so any type of um, genetics definitely can play a role. Age can play a role. Um, if you have any immunocompromising disease, it can contribute to uh, periodontal disease. So um, you know diabetes or, um, or or any other any other immune deficiency issues, uh, healing problems, stuff like that it will contribute. So those are some of the causes. Uh, we don't want to forget neglect, um, you know, the absence of good oral hygiene at home and seeing a professional hygienist uh, at least twice a year. Um, you know, neglect will also contribute to gum disease. So we've got age, genetics, oral hygiene, 
and another systemic diseases that that could cause the problems smoking stuff like that too smoke the two the two most common causes of gum disease are smoking and diabetes those are the most common causes so if you have diabetes believe me you better take an extra care you better take extra care of your teeth to make sure that they're staying nice and healthy if you're a smoker same thing you better get in there and get it cleaned up if you uh pregnancy you can't have uh, pregnancy uh periodontitis that happens that's a thing so um make sure you're you know under the care of a dentist uh during your pregnancy also all right what's next what are some treatments to be done so treatments can be as uh from, from simple to a more aggressive uh, some of the simple treatments could be education, right? Better instruction on how to take care of your teeth at home. Actually, how to brush your teeth. So some people think, oh, I just get in there with a the toothbrush and I brush them. But the, the proper technique, and maybe we'll do a video on this because I don't think a lot of people know, but you're, you should have half of the bristles on the gum, half of the bristles on the teeth, gently, like the only amount of pressure that you need is with two fingers, and, um, and, and trying to work those bristles down in between the tooth and the gum. So make sure you get the plaque from down in there. So we got good brushing technique, about two minutes, and, uh, and a good flossing technique. Okay, it's not pop in, pop out. It's go in, you hug the tooth in front, and then you hug the tooth in the back, and then you go to the next one. So Part of treatment would be um, improving your um, at-home care, maybe even some um, antimicrobial mouth rinses. By the way, back to the cause. The cause is bacteria, okay? You have other reason, other things that lead to a buildup of bacteria, but the bacteria is, it's an infection, is what's eating away the gums and uh, the bone. So I don't want uh, to lead anyone astray. It is, it is a bacterial infection that needs to be treated. So the types of treatment could be at home, uh, improved oral care. It could be um, mouth rinses. Uh, it could be a change in your diet. It could be, you know, depending on the cause, the treatment's going to change. So it could be uh, uncontrolled diabetes. You know, maybe you need to get controlled. And uh, if, you're, um, if you're pregnant and you have uh, some gum issues, then perhaps you'll want to see your hygienist um, more than once during a pregnancy to make sure those gums stay healthy. Other types of treatments when you have, um, the, way, the way it's measured often at your dental appointment is that the hygienist will use a probe. It's called a perio probe, and it has little millimeter markings on it, and they'll gently place this probe between the tooth and the gum until it meets resistance, and they want to check for two things. They want to check depth, and they want to see if there's any bleeding when they probe. So they're not, you know, gouging, trying to get you to bleed. They're just gently placing this around the teeth. And if there's bleeding, that's a sign that there's an infection there. And if the pockets are more than like four or five millimeters deep, you probably have uh, some form of gum disease. So, um, you know, two to three millimeter pockets are all healthy. And um, those can usually be managed with good brushing and good flossing. But even the very best brushers and flossers cannot at home get deeper than three millimeters. So uh, that means if you have a four or five millimeter pocket, six months. So you see your hygienist again before that pocket gets debrided of the bacteria that's in there. So, so keep that in mind. So we don't like fours. Fours make us raise an eyebrow. Fives for sure. You got some, some form of gum disease. Uh, so the way that it's treated by the hygienist is with deep, they call it deep cleanings. So that's not what it's technically called, but that's what everyone calls it. You're getting a deep cleaning. Usually it's deep because the probing depths are down five or six millimeters. So you got to get the scalers down that deep to clean the root surfaces of the teeth because what happens is the bacteria causes plaque and then if the plaque is not removed either through at-home care or the hygienist, it will develop these hard calcifications called calculus. Now all this is perpetual. If it goes unclean, this just creates an environment that's even more aggressive and more bone loss, more gum loss. So you got to get the plaque off and you got to get the calculus off. There's different types of calculus. Uh, that's for you hygienists, you nerd hygienists out there, but you got to get the calculus and bacteria out of there. So they'll do a physical debridement with scalers. You'll be numb, so it, it, the teeth are a little bit sore afterwards, but um, they'll, they'll scale the area. And then sometimes they'll even use some antibiotics to directly place down into the pocket. So if it's a six millimeter pocket, 
They'll use ultrasonic scalers. They'll use hand scalers once they get it nice and clean. Then we're going to use an antibacterial, an antibiotic, a little pellet maybe. Um, that Arrestin is a real popular one. So again, the uh, doxycycline family. And so they'll, they'll place this pellet down at the base of the pocket. That will help kill any extra bacteria that might be down in there to, to start create the healing process and reattachment of the tooth and the gums. Here's something real interesting though I got to point out. If you have four or five millimeters of recession, without grafting, without bringing in donor tissue to, to rebuild that tissue, it is unlikely that you're going to gain back three or four millimeters of attachment uh, just through treatment. So what you're, the goal is, is to arrest, to stop the progression of the disease. And if you had a five millimeter pocket, we don't want it ever to become a six. So the goal is maybe to get it to tighten up like one, maybe two millimeters to a three or a four, something that's a little more manageable. And, uh, and then of course, afterwards, you would go into um, more frequent intervals that you would see your hygienist. So it wouldn't be twice a year. It's probably gonna be four times a year. And if they're really advanced cases, we might even get a periodontist involved. So the periodontist is a specialist that works on the gums. They're, they're usually who takes care of the grafting if that's needed, uh, any surgical cleanings that need to be done, stuff like that. So they're definitely our compadres in the effort uh, to fight gum disease. Okay. What are some of the costs of the treatment? Well, that's a good question. So uh, sometimes when the case is a little more advanced and you see a periodontist, you may actually be sedated for it. And uh, so if you're getting sedation dentistry and then some surgical gum cleanings, you know, for, for the whole mouth, uh, it, it's usually divided into quadrants. So we'll talk about the upper right, upper left. Uh, so if you did all four quadrants, um, you know, you could spend a couple thousand dollars doing that. I mean, 1500 and with sedation, you know, it can add up, uh, especially if you're adding the antibiotics in there because those are real expensive, the antibiotic pellets. Um, if you're going to see your general dentist and the hygienist is going to do some um, scaling and root planing, that's technically what it's called, or a deep cleaning um, in, a, in a quadrant of dentistry that maybe where there's mild periodontitis. Um, it, it, it can range from anywhere, I don't know, I've seen it from 180 to 250, $180 to 250 per quadrant. And each quadrant to scale and root plane probably takes about an hour. Um, and so if you're going to get antibiotic pellets, it'll be a little bit more than that. And then I know what the next question is. It's, does my insurance cover any of it? And uh, insurance sees, um, sees this stuff kind of like a, a major treatment. So we talked about insurance and the categories of uh, base, uh, preventive, basic, and major. And it pays for about half of deep cleanings. About half. Okay. Uh, but, of course, you always have that annual maximum, $1,500. Once, once you get there, they're not separate. They do it for your gums and then out of pocket stuff for the other dental work and vice versa. So just keep that in mind. Hope that helped. Um, the last question is what are some preventative measures to do? What are some pre prevention? Prevention? Well, uh, we mentioned some, some prevention when we talked about treatment. And so prevention, number one, is going to be get educated. You know, if you're not familiar with what it means, um, just do a self-assessment. How, how am I doing at, with my at-home care? And if, you're, if you go to see your dentist or your hygienist and they seem like they're in a hurry or they don't uh, address this, you ask them. Just say, hey, you know what? I'm just curious. I want you to tell me honestly how I'm doing at home. And uh, they may say, well, describe to me how you're brushing your teeth. Describe to me how you floss. How often do you floss? How often do you brush? Um, what are your eating habits? And um, what, are your, what are any other oral habits that you have? And, um, and so let, help, let them help you make an assessment, but, but truly take, take, a, take an inventory, like how often are you brushing? You should be brushing at least twice a day, and that's the gentle brushing. Um, it'd be awesome if you did it three times a day. You should floss at least once a day, but honestly, we're lucky to see patients that floss several times a week. You know, most people don't do it every day. And that may be one of the reasons why gum disease is so prevalent here in the United States, but I don't know that. I just, they're not real vigilant at home about it. And a lot of times people approach their dentistry like other things. And, and if it doesn't hurt, I'm really not going to, I'm not, I'm going to avoid it. I got other things I got to worry about that, that, that are hurting, so to speak. So they address that stuff, but, but they don't think about the prevention. The prevention is what is king. And so make sure you're using a good fluoride toothpaste, uh, a 
you're brushing and flossing regularly, you're seeing a prof professional regularly, um, I would say watch your diet. You know, you don't want to do things that are going to, um, you know, lead towards type 2 diabetes, which is very common in this country. You don't want to um, do other things that could compromise your immune system because all of those things could you lead to gum disease. Um, so anyway, that's that's some good. Um, and a good mouthwash is also antimic antimicrobial mouthwash is good too. So anyway, those are the most common questions asked about scaling and root